Okay. Um, so I'm with Metametrics Clinical Laboratory, just to kind of give you that disclaimer here. I uh, spend most of my days talking on the phone with doctors about laboratory results. So I, I have the privilege of seeing tons of patient lab results. And uh, today I want to talk about the role of the gut in uh, neurological problems. Uh, just in case you didn't know, your, your gut and brain are in good communication here. Uh, some of the things I'll talk about today are um, intestinal permeability, foods and migraine headache, amino acids and neurotransmitters. Um, I'm going to spend some time talking about some specific case studies so that you can you know, see how this works uh, in certain patients and even the protocols used and their lab results. Um, I'll give you some testing recommendations and some nutritional tools and treatments. Okay. So uh, the anti-aging group uh, believes that uh, you know, disabilities associated with normal aging are caused by physiological dysfunction. And this can, is ameliorable to medical treatment um, so that the quality and quantity of life can be lengthened and improved as one grows chronologically older. So I, I really think that the gut is a neat leverage point here for you to, and I, I've got this little uh, schematic here that shows that if you, if you can get um, this leverage point, if you can improve the health of the gut, you, with just a little bit of work, you can improve the health of the whole body. So uh, examples are, you know, you, you want good gut function uh, if your patient has skin disorder, uh, arthropathies, uh, balancing hormones, um, autoimmune diseases. Th these are all areas, and, and we'll talk about uh, the central nervous system today. So these are all areas where if you have a healthy functioning gut, you're going to get a lot more overall improvement in the patient. Okay? So it, it's a nice uh, leverage point for your treatment. Okay? So just uh, talking about the gut-brain connection, it, it's a lot more than just Obviously, if someone's constipated or with diarrhea, they're going to feel terrible. <laughs> but it's, it's more than that. Uh, for example, there are cases of schizophrenia that have been resolved by just re withdrawing gluten. Um, celiac disease patients are more likely to have anxious neurotic behavior, depressive syndrome. Uh, food allergies have been associated with depression, bipolar, panic disorder and uh, IBS patients also have psychoneurosis and depression. So uh, it goes a little bit beyond just, uh, you know, feeling terrible when your gut isn't, isn't uh, functioning properly. And one of the main ways that we understand that this occurs, especially in the cases of celiac, for example, is intestinal permeability. Um, this probably isn't new information for you guys. Uh, you know, we have our, the healthy gut. It's supposed to be a very strong barrier, uh, uh, again, basically, to protect us from the external environment. And you can see here in the healthy gut, um, these, are, these are tight cell junctions, and this is a strong uh, barrier. However, uh, when we develop leaky gut, uh, the, the um, absorptive regions, uh, breakdown, and we have more paracellular uh, um, transit here. So antigens, um, large peptides, bacteria, fungus, parasites, these things can cross into our circulation and present and, and start off an immune cascade and um, affect a lot of different parts of the body. Okay. Also, foods have, I mean, have been shown over and over again to be related with migraine, primarily through uh, triggers. 18 to 30 percent of patients will say that foods trigger their migraines. And uh, one really impressionable study was uh, done where they took an oligo oligoantigenic diet, you know, took the patients off of all these allergenic foods, um, and it resolved migraine in 93 percent of the patients. When they reintroduced the foods, uh, there was a relapse of 91 percent. And what was really interesting in that study was it was the very foods that the patients craved the most that were the foods that triggered the migraine. So uh, we see that clinically, too, that when you tell a patient they can't have milk anymore, their face just falls, and it's like the worst news that's ever been given to them. <laughs> 
Um, so here's a key. I, I just want to get into a little bit of the background uh, the, that's in the medical literature about amino acids and neurotransmitters uh, in, in uh, regard to depression, migraine, uh, chronic fatigue. And this slide, um, and just so you know, every, all these slides are on your CD, so um, you, you don't have to take all these notes. But this will, can serve you as a key. Uh, this is giving you the amino acid precursor. Uh, the neurotransmitter that comes from that amino acid, and then the urinary breakdown product that I'm going to be talking about in urine. Okay, so this is a helpful key if you use this uh, presentation later to review. Okay, so aminos and neurotransmitters have excitatory and inhibitory action in the central nervous system. Uh, in depression, we know uh, that there's typically low phenylalanine and low tryptophan plasma levels. And also low serotonin and low norepinephrine are known to characterize uh, depression. Okay, And we've also seen that in chronic fatigue patients, if you give them free form amino acids, there is a huge reduction in symptoms for uh, you know, something like over 70 percent of the patients. Okay, So this goes back to amino acids. Uh, not just their uh, neurotransmitter function, but also their uh, activity as producing cellular energy. Okay. Further, in headache, when you look at the medical literature, you see that there are abnormalities in serotonin, uh, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, and glycine. All of these things can be measured in plasma. Um, and then also lower, low norepinephrine and epinephrine. Okay, and, and this isn't, shouldn't be any big new news to us because pharmaceutical and pharmacological treatments target these very same mechanisms to relieve migraine and to relieve depression. Okay, so uh, this is a review here of some of the biochemistry. This is, can be a useful slide for you if you uh, just want to refresh on how, how we make these, neuro, how we synthesize these neurotransmitters in vivo. Uh, phenylalanine converts to tyrosine. The cofactors are iron, tetrahydrobiopterin, and niacin. 